Hey boys, it's Harm None. Today I'm going to be doing an updated video on the 10 best defensive vehicles in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now a few things have changed since the last time I made one of these videos. I've reflected, I realized that maybe some of my picks from last time weren't exactly the best. Overall, the list is pretty similar, but I thought that I should update it for the next year, of course, which is 2024. So anyway, guys, if you enjoy the video, a like is, of course, appreciated. If not, dislike. Subscribe to my channel if you guys are new. I'm going for 300,000 this year, and if you want to help me get there, that would be really cool. Let's go ahead and get into the list, starting off with number 10. At number 10, we have the HVY Night Shark coming in at $1,245,000. Now the Night Shark is an extremely fast vehicle, especially for how armored it is. It's also relatively cheap as well. Now the Night Shark has front mounted machine guns, which might as well be water guns shooting lime juice, but they will get the job done within a few business days, as long as whatever you're shooting at isn't armored. If it is armored, it might be a few weeks at least to be able to take the vehicle out. Now the armor on the vehicle is pretty excellent though. It is able to take 27 homing missiles or eight to nine RPGs, depending on where it gets hit by said RPGs, which is more than enough to outlast an oppressor Mark II's full missile arsenal. So that is pretty good. Now, another good feature that I think a lot of people kind of overlook is that this thing is also repairable at Los Santos Customs, which can come in handy as well. Now, a lot of vehicles with the Night Sharks level of armor are only repairable in specialized vehicle workshops, like in the Avenger, MOC, or in certain properties as well. This is definitely a very good one, definitely an entry level vehicle, but still very useful nonetheless. This is one you guys should definitely look into if you don't have one already. At number nine, we have the Pagasi Toreador coming in at $4,250,000. Now the Pagasi Toreador was nerfed last year. Despite this though, it is still a very good vehicle, both defensively and offensively. Sadly, they did increase the price of the vehicle from $3,660,000 all the way up to that $4,250,000 price point. Now, it is still just a really good vehicle. Even for 4.25 mil, it is really good value for the money. Now, unfortunately, when they did this, though, they also restricted its use in missions as well as heist setups. Uh, making it so you can't use it in as many missions as you could previously. Now, this is, of course, likely due to it being way too powerful. Now, the Torador does have some of the most aggressive tracking missiles in the game, making it especially ideal for taking out oppressors of any sort. However, it can take out pretty much anything due to the great missiles and the great tracking that they have, but also the maneuverability of the vehicle. You know, it does possess a rocket booster which can propel you out of harm's way and allow you to dodge incoming missiles and gunfire, all while also being able to get you situated perfectly to attack your opponent's back. It's a very good vehicle in that regard. Now it also does feature high damaging machine guns as well, so if you're tired of using missiles I guess you can use machine guns. Now a great feature and potentially one of the best defensive features of the car overall is that it doubles as a submarine, allowing you to escape into the ocean or any body of water nearby to you. Now you can also use the boost underwater to get away faster as well and it does also get access to torpedoes in case enemies follow you into the water. Overall the Torador is a great vehicle and it certainly is an awesome defensive vehicle. This is one I would look into for sure. Number eight, we have the HVY Insurgent Pickup Custom, costing $1,795,000 for the initial purchase price of the HVY Insurgent Pickup, which is a Pegasus vehicle, and then it's gonna take you an additional $202,500 to upgrade into the custom variant by taking that Pegasus vehicle to an MOC or Avenger and then upgrading it. Now, the Insurgent Pickup Custom only beats out the Night Shark because it does have identical armor, but it also has a top mounted machine gun or upgradable minigun, which does suck by the way, so you shouldn't do that, as well as proximity mines that can be dropped behind the vehicle to dissuade attackers that are in pursuit of you. Now, it can seat nine players, which makes it even better generally, and does give the option for a lot of potential firepower coming out of the vehicle. Now, despite the Insurgent Pickup Custom's relatively massive size, it's actually quite quick, and it does allow you to get away a little easier than if it was slower. Plus, due to its pure mass, it will move vehicles that are in your way out of your way very easily when you hit them. Overall, it is a very useful vehicle to have, 
and it can definitely save your ass a few times. At number 7 we have The Avenger, coming in at $3,450,000. Now The Avenger originally required you to own a facility to be able to purchase and store it, however with last year's San Andreas Mercenaries DLC, The Avenger was updated to be storable in the hangar as well as upgradable in the hangar. Now with this same update, it also got a slew of new upgrades, including pilot controlled missiles and machine guns, which output pretty decent damage and they're generally alright. Now the Avenger also has three cannon stations that can be manned by players, and these output insane amounts of damage and have really really crazy range as well. Now the Avenger is also easily the most armored aircraft in GTA Online, which I felt like was enough to get it onto this list by itself. It's also got vertical takeoff and landing, allowing the vehicle to land and fly like a helicopter for that matter or fly and land like an airplane would. It's quite useful and also has some workshops that can be put inside of it like a vehicle and Mark II weapon workbench. Another good defensive feature is that when the Avenger flies like a plane, it is really fast and will outrun a lot of other vehicles. Now also with that same San Andreas Mercenaries DLC, it got upgraded to also be capable of having a stealth mode as well as a missile lock on jammer, but both of these are only engaged when the vehicle is in autopilot, so neither of them are that useful, uh, but still they are kind of good defensive features, at least mildly. At number 6 we have the Bravado Half Track, coming in at $1,695,000. If you got the trade price, now if you don't, it's going to run you $2,254,350. Now the Bravado Half Track is pretty unique in the fact that it has fully bulletproof windows on the front of it and you cannot shoot through the back of it, period. The only way you can actually be shot out of the half track is through these side windows. So as long as you keep your sides away from where your attackers are, you're going to be pretty much invincible to regular small arms fire in this vehicle. Now it also has the exact same armor as the Night Shark and HVY Insurgent Custom, being able to take 27 homing rockets or 8-9 to nine RPGs, again depending on where you get hit by said RPGs. Now the flat cannon in the back also deals out huge amounts of damage and is upgradable to be a 4 barrel flat cannon as well. Now unfortunately the vehicle is extremely slow. It certainly is a tank when it comes to taking damage and being that you can't really get shot out of it, at least not very easily, it is extremely good defensively in that regard. Now you know what they say, slow and steady wins the race, and I think that kind of sums up the Bravado half track, at least sometimes. At number 5 we have the Ocelot Virtue, coming in at $2,235,000 to $2,980,000 if you don't have the trade price, or of course you can get it for free by completing the first and last dose missions from the Los Santos Drug Wars DLC. Now the Ocelot Virtue is an electric supercar in GTA Online that has armor plating upgrades as well as a Monty Tech, meaning you can put a missile lock on jammer on it of course. But even if it gets hit, it will survive for quite some time due to those armor plating upgrades. Now, it's also the fastest accelerating car on PC, PS4, and Xbox One, at least as far as non-rocket booster cars go. Now, it does have a relatively low top speed of around 120 miles per hour, which is quite weak. And this does make it very good for getting away from attackers in short distances. However, if you're trying to run away on the highway or something like that, you will likely eventually get caught because of that lower top speed. However, it is still a really good vehicle, although I am getting pretty sick of talking about it and I really wish that Rockstar would make something better than it so I can talk about that instead, because I have to mention the virtue in pretty much any video that I do about defensive vehicles, armored vehicles, good vehicles, practical vehicles, helpful vehicles, it just, it gets mentioned all the time, I'm getting sick of talking about it. So anyway, we're gonna move on to number four right now. At number four, we got the F-160 Raju coming in at $5,141,250 if you have the trade price, which is not worth getting by the way, and it does cost $6,855,000 if you do not have the trade price. Now, you know what they say, the best defense is a good offense, which is exactly why the F-160 Raju is a fantastic defensive vehicle. Its best defensive feature is easily the stealth capability. Being able to conceal your location from people that want to take you out is a massive advantage that 99.5% of vehicles in GTA Online do not possess. And then of course you do have the VTOL mode as well, which can allow you to duck behind buildings and reach places that a lot of other vehicles simply could never get to. Now it's also extremely good in terms of acceleration and it does have a very very high top speed as far as planes go. 
Now this does allow you to get away further and faster than almost anything your adversaries might be using. Now, of course, it also does have weapons, which are of course simply for defense only. You never use them to just attack somebody. And uh, those weapons being homing missiles that have pretty okay tracking. It's not the best, but it's not the worst either. I'd say they're effective overall. However, it's just not as good as some other vehicles homing missiles. It also does have dual explosive guns, which don't really do a ton of damage considering that they're explosive guns, but they pack enough of a punch to justify using them on some vehicles. Now, overall, the F-160 is excellent for offensive, but it is every bit as good when it comes to defending yourself in GTA Online, and it's definitely a vehicle that I would recommend looking into. And number three, we got the Acid Lab or Brigade 6x6, depending on what you want to call it. This is gonna cost you $750,000 to purchase it after you steal it by completing the first dose missions with Dax from the Drug Wars DLC. Now, as much of a pain in the ass as they are, they are worth doing because you do get the Acid Lab at the end. Don't buy the Acid Lab or Brigade 6x6 without doing the missions though, because you won't be able to access it until you complete them. So keep that in mind. Now the Acid Lab's main defensive feature is that it is capable of taking 48 homing missiles before it gets destroyed, or multiple RPGs. The Acid Lab is also quite fast, despite its relatively massive size. And this also comes to its advantage though, because you can easily move other vehicles that get in your way, out of your way, and the ram on the front of it throws vehicles far and wide. This vehicle is definitely more suited to just simply outlasting your enemy's attacks rather than actually taking the fight back to them. Now, it will also make you a bunch of money due to the acid lab that is contained within it that you can then spend on other vehicles that are more suited to actually fighting back rather than just outlasting whatever attacks you are facing. At number two, we got the Kasatka Submarine coming in at $2.2 million. The Kasatka Submarine isn't the most damage absorbing vehicle ever. It's certainly not the strongest overall. However, out of the watercraft in GTA Online, it certainly is the strongest. However, the armor on it is glitched, which means that sometimes it can take 10 RPGs to sink, but sometimes it might take two. You simply just don't really know due to the armor being glitched on it. This vehicle is another one though that can remove you from the map, and the way that you can achieve this is by diving underneath the surface of the water. Now when the Kasaka submerges, it disappears from the expanded map as well as the radar, and this is pretty awesome for getting away from pursuing foes. The Kasaka also has a number of other great defensive measures, like being able to fast travel around the map. This is useful defensively, but also just generally for getting from one side of the map to the other very, very quickly. But if you're getting attacked, you can simply fast travel to Polito Bay, say, from the Los Santos Beach if that's where you're getting attacked or vice versa. You can also go from the Fort San Kudo military base side of the map to the lighthouse side of the map as well super quickly and this is definitely a really really underrated defensive feature. Now the Kasaka also comes equipped with some pretty decent defensive weapons like the periscope missile launcher as well as the cruise missiles that can be fired from the vessel which are of course strictly for defense who never attack somebody with those especially if it was unjustified. No one has ever done that. And then of course, it also possesses the driver controlled torpedoes for attacks that are coming from the water. Now, overall, it certainly is a vehicle that can be used defensively or offensively, but I think it is definitely more suited towards defense than it is towards offense. And number one, still the best defensive vehicle in the game is the mobile operation center costing $1,225,000 for the initial purchase price, and this is still the most armored vehicle in the entire game, at least the MOC cab is, which does give it a pretty obvious advantage. Now, it can take 67 homing missiles and many, 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 many RPGs before blowing up. Now, it can also be used to back people down because the rear of the cab is entirely bulletproof, so if you just face you know, rearwards and advance on people like that. Well, you're able to shoot through the back, by the way. Uh, they can't shoot you, but you can shoot them. And I think you can see how that's pretty OP. Now, of course, the actual mobile operations center, which is the trailer, also has some defensive turrets on it. And that itself is also quite well armored. And you can also use that to block the road if somebody's chasing you by dropping it off of the cab and people are probably gonna hit it and not be able to get around it. So that can be really, really good defensively as well. Overall, great defensive vehicle. This is definitely one you should look into. You will need to own a bunker in order to store it. So do keep that in mind. Anyway guys, there you have it. That is my list of the 10 best defensive vehicles in Grand Theft Auto Online. If you enjoyed this video, a like is of course appreciated, if not dislike. 
Consider subscribing to my channel if you guys are new as well. Comment down below and let me know if you think I missed any vehicles that should have been on this list and let me know what you would sub them out for. Comment a seven if you made it to the end and we'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care. Peace.